Hello everyone, today we are going to learn some magic. Let's say I have this Excel report and I want to put this on a PowerPoint so I can present it to management. One option is to copy this report, go to PowerPoint, paste it as a picture and then do some formatting, sizing and all that stuff. Well, looks okay, but imagine if you need to make several copies of the slide, for example, one slide for each category, or let's say if you want to make this presentation very often, let's say every week, then this approach might be quite time consuming. But what if I told you that this entire thing is automatable, such that with a click of one button, Excel will automatically export this report to PowerPoint and not just export the report to PowerPoint, but do some basic formatting, provide some titles, etc. You don't believe it? Well, let me show you. Here, I have a button to generate PowerPoint. See in my bottom bar, the PowerPoint application is not even open right now. Now, let me click this button and you'll see the PowerPoint will open automatically. And boom, not only the PowerPoint is generated, it's very well formatted and the titles are also there. For example, we have a separate slide for each category and title of each slide shows the growth for that category. So everything is dynamic. Now that's some real magic. And if you want to learn the secret code behind this magic, stick around because this is what we'll be learning in this video over the next few minutes. So I'll see you there. To start off, I have this dashboard set up. It's not necessary for you to have the exact same dashboard. You can do this magic on any report that you might have. But if you do like this dashboard and want to learn how to build it, then you can check out the full video here where I have built this dashboard from scratch. So step one, we will first set up the button that will do the magic. I will insert a shape and do some formatting on it. Go to insert tab, select shape of your choice, draw out the shape and give some formatting. I will remove the outline and give it a bit of shadow, but you can do the formatting of your choice. Step two, we will now set up the code to generate PowerPoint from Excel. I will go to the developer tab and click on visual basic. Alternatively, I can also press Alt F11 on my keyboard to open the code editor. If you do not have the developer tab enabled in your ribbon, you can do that by going to the file, clicking on options, then click on customize ribbon. Over there, you will see an option for developer. It might be unchecked by default, so place a check next to it, then click on OK, and you should be able to see the developer tab on your ribbon. I will open the code editor again by pressing Alt F11 and then let's start writing the code. Now I will explain the entire code line by line. However, I'm assuming that viewers of this video will have some basic knowledge of VBA programming. If you are completely new to VBA coding and are not able to follow along in this video, please let me know in the comment section and I'll try to make a crash course video on VBA programming. Now I will go to the insert tab and click on module. This will open the code editor. Inside the editor, I will create my first sub procedure and name it as create PPT. Then I will write some code. So let's go through this code in detail. First, I'm doing some declarations. The first five declarations are related to PowerPoint objects like PowerPoint application, presentation, slide, shape, etc. The last declaration is an Excel range. This will be the area that we would like to be copied into the PowerPoint. In the next step, I'm turning off the screen updates to avoid any flickering. Next, I'm setting P app equal to new PowerPoint application. In simple terms, this line of code will launch the PowerPoint application. Next line will create a new presentation and the last line will set the layout of the slide to custom layout one. To explain it in a better way, let me show you by actually doing these steps with the PowerPoint and I think that will make more sense. When I launch the PowerPoint, I get this screen. In this screen, PowerPoint is basically asking me, what do I want to do next? Do I want to open a new presentation or go with an existing one, etc.? 
At this stage, the PowerPoint application is open, but the presentation is not set up. This is what the first line of our code does. It just launches the PowerPoint software. The second line of code goes and tells PowerPoint to start a blank application. When I start a blank presentation, I will get a default slide. If I right click on the slide and go to the layout, I will get various layout options to select from. Depending upon how I want to structure my slide, I will select the appropriate layout option. This is what the third line of our code is doing. For now, I want to go with the layout that has a title and a subtitle. This is the first option and therefore in my code I have selected layout and in the brackets I have provided index of 1. Now let's try to run this code. Make sure you do not have your PowerPoint open so that we can test the code properly. I will click on the play button or press F5 on my keyboard to run the macro. And it doesn't work. In simple words, the reason why it's not working is because Excel doesn't know what PowerPoint is or how to open it. To fix this, I will go to the Tools tab, click on References, and then find Microsoft PowerPoint in the list. Once I have found, I will check the box next to it. Now, if I play my macro, a new PowerPoint application should start. And here you go, it's working. Our next step will be to modify the code such that it picks up the Excel dashboard and puts it into the PowerPoint. I will first write the code and then explain it. By the way, I'll put the link to this file in the description of the video. You can also copy and paste the code in your files rather than writing it manually if you want to save time. So I have written four additional lines of code on top of the step two. First one is telling the Excel which area on the Excel sheet I want to be copied. I will quickly go back to my Excel file. Here, I would like the area from cell B1 to cell Z42 to be pasted in the PowerPoint. So that is what I'm providing in the first line of my code. In the second line of code, I'm simply adding a new slide in the PowerPoint file, which we already created in step two. When adding a new slide, you need to provide the slide number and the layout. For number, I will provide one. And for layout, I will put P layout, which we already defined above. In the third line, I'm copying the range, which we defined above. And with the last line, I'm pasting it on the PowerPoint slide. Now let's try to run this code. And voila, it's working. Now you can see that there are still two boxes in the slide which were there from the layout. I want to get rid of the first box and for the second box I will keep it so I can use it for my title but I will need to move it up and format it so it looks better. So this takes us to step number four. So I will add a few more lines of code. Here in the first line, I'm setting P shape equal to shape two on the slide. So now what is shape two? When we ran the code last time, we saw a new slide was created where there were two shapes pre-existing by default. This was the title and the subtitle. Subtitle was the second shape. And then of course there was a third shape as well, which was our very own dashboard and it was set up by our code. For now, I want to select shape two which I've done in my code, and then I'm saying that with shape two, make its top position equal to zero, which means that shape two will be placed at the top of the slide. And for shape one, I'm saying delete it altogether as I don't need it anymore. Now I will run this code to see if it gives the desired result. And it looks great. The subtitle has moved to the top and the title is gone altogether. But looking at this slide, you might have noticed that some numbers aren't appearing correctly. For example, this one and over here, this one. These numbers are showing hash errors or hash signs. So in the next step, we will try to fix these formatting issues. But before we start the formatting piece, I want to do an another very important step at this stage, and that is to save the file. If your file has a VBA code, then it needs to be saved as a macro enabled workbook. So I will do that. Yeah. 
And now we can start working on the formatting. The formatting issue, which we saw a few seconds back, occurs mainly when the column widths in Excel are not big enough to accommodate the entire data. Or if the column widths are just sufficient to show the data, there should always be a little bit of a gap between the data and the border of the column. Now, honestly, I can solve this problem by simply dragging the columns and making them bigger manually. That will solve the problem for now, but later on, if new data comes in, we might see this error again. To make our macro more versatile, we will put in a few lines of code that will counter this error as and when it arises. To do that, I will write the following code. These four lines of code will ensure that column widths are adjusted to fit the data before dashboard gets passed to the PowerPoint. Now let's give it a try to see if it's working. Good, so the errors that we were seeing before are now gone. Since we are working on the formatting piece, let's do some favor for our title as well. Right now, the title looks quite orthodox and bland, so let's give it some color and alignment. I will put in a few lines of code. Now let's understand the code. This portion of the code was already there. I have just added one line in which I'm making the left position of the title is equal to zero. In the following line, I'm giving it a text of this is my title. It's basically a placeholder title for now. Next, I'm selecting Tahoma font size 24, the RGB code as mentioned here, and making the font bold. And lastly, I'm aligning the text left. Now let's rerun it and see how it looks. Good, it's looking nice. Now it seems like the title is almost colliding with the dashboard, so I would like to push the dashboard slightly down. I will put one line of code and hopefully this will do the job. Here is the extra line of code I have added. I'm selecting shape 3, which is dashboard, and making its top position 50. Let's run it and see how it looks. And it's looking fine. If I want to export just one slide, our PowerPoint and macro are almost complete. But let's take this macro to a next level. Now, I want to create three slides with a click of one button, and each slide should show dashboard for a different category. To understand this, let's first go to my Excel dashboard. This dashboard shows sales of a fictional superstore. And this superstore has three categories, furniture, office supplies, and technology. My dashboard is fully interactive. That is, if I click on furniture, it will filter all the data for furniture category. Same goes with the middle and the bottom part of the dashboard as well. Again, if you want to build the same dashboard in five simple steps, check out the video over here. In simple words, I want my macro to filter all the data on this dashboard with the furniture category, paste the dashboard to the PowerPoint, then go again and filter everything for office supplies, again paste the dashboard to PowerPoint, and then repeat the same with the technology category. Let's develop the code which will achieve this. I have copied the code here. Note that I'm putting these lines of code before the portion of code that copies the dashboard to PowerPoint because I want the dashboard to be filtered first and then go to the PowerPoint. In this piece of code, essentially I'm telling my macro to select the category slicer, keep furniture as true and rest of the categories as false. The buttons that we saw on my Excel dashboard are actually slicers of a pivot table. Then I'm repeating same with slicer category one and slicer category two. On my Excel dashboard, the topmost slicer is the slicer category, the middle one is slicer category one, and the last one is the slicer category two. Essentially, I'm telling my code to select furniture for all the slicers on the entire dashboard before it paste it into PowerPoint. Now let's see if it's working.
and yes we have dashboard only for the furniture category now i want my macro to repeat the same steps for the other two categories for that i will copy the same code two more times and instead of keeping furniture as true i will keep office supplies as true and in the third instance i'll keep technology as true i will fast forward the video for a few seconds from here To give you a brief overview of what I did, I have used exact same code as before. Instead of keeping furniture equal to true, I have kept technology equal to true. On a side note, I want to highlight that we can make this code more efficient, for example, by using loops. But I'm not getting too technical here and trying to keep the code as simple as possible, so majority of my viewers can follow along. If you have VBA experience and know how the loops work, you can achieve this in lesser lines of code as well. Now, let's test our code. And boom, it's working. We have three different slides, each showing a different category. Now, let's go back to Excel. Here, you will see that our code has filtered everything to technology because that was the last step in our code. As a good practice, the code should return the Excel file to the original position in which it was there before. That will look more professional. To do that, I will put some more lines of code, which will essentially set all the categories to true for all the slicers. Now I will try to run the code, but before I run the code, I'll select all the categories on my Excel dashboard. Now when we click the run button, code will set up the PowerPoint like before. But also when I go back to Excel, I will get the file in default position, that is with all the categories selected. Now, although our current code is giving us slides for each category, the title of all the slides is the same. It will be nice to have a dynamic title as well, such that title of first slide says technology, the next one says office supplies, etc. That's what we will do in our next step. First, I will put one line right before the end of the code. This line ensures that screen updating is back to true after the PowerPoint is all set up and all the work is done. I think I had forgotten it before. Now let's come back to the title. To set up the title, I will use a couple of helper cells in my Excel sheet. One helper cell will be the placeholder for the category name. The other cell will have the title. I will create the title with the help of the concatenate and text function. The concatenate function combines different strings and the text function converts the value to a given number format. Inside the text function, I'm giving reference to the cell that has the value for growth versus previous year. So all in all, my title will look something like this. It will say category name grew by X percentage. We have set up all the helper cells. Now I want my code to pick these helper cells up when putting the title on the PowerPoint. For that, I will go back to my code editor. You will recall we had put a placeholder title in this line here. I will remove the placeholder and instead give reference to the helper cell address. Now I will repeat this for the other categories. I have repeated this step for all the categories. However, if I run my code in the current position, all three slides will mention the same category name. This is because we have hard coded the category name in the helper cell. We need to make helper cell dynamic as well, such that our code changes the value of helper cell at the same time when it's filtering the dashboard for a particular category. I will do that via another line of code. In this line, I'm assigning the value of furniture to cell AF5, which is our helper cell, just before the piece of code that modifies the title of the slide. Then I will repeat this step for the other categories. 
Before we run the code, I would like to make a couple of corrections. At the top, we do not need these three lines, so I'll get rid of them. And also, where we are declaring the p-slide, we do not need i plus 1. Only one should work as well. Sorry for that, I think I had missed it. However, these errors were not fatal for our code. The code was still working, but I just wanted to correct these mistakes. Next, let's go ahead and run our code. Now, all our slides have dynamic titles, which is great. Lastly, we will assign this macro to the button we had set up in step 1. I will go back to my Excel sheet. I will right click on the button, select Assign Macro and then select Create PPT. Create PPT is the name of the macro that we had set up. Now when our user clicks this button, it will generate the PowerPoint. I will share the link to this file in the description of this video. If you want to reuse the code, please feel free to do so. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the next one.